These snowflake medallion ornaments are great for last minute Christmas decorating. Each one uses a small amount of yarn. They do not require any stiffening and because an overlay technique is used, there's no sewing. They are very quick to make. So if you're stuck for Christmas market stall ideas, then these will have your inventory topped up in no time. And from just one pattern, there are many ways to present each ornament. For example, you can change the size of the ornaments by varying the weight of the yarn. For this one, I used two strands of fingering weight yarn held together to make a larger sized ornament. And for this really small one, I used three strands of stranded cotton. You can also embellish the basic ornament with a tassel or you can thread bamboo skewers through the points to make a star-shaped frame. Needless to say, these ornaments can be used in many ways. Aside from being hung on a tree, why not ditch the mass-produced bows and add these as a more thoughtful, reusable embellishment on your gifts? You could also make a festive set of earrings from these tiny ones. Some of you may even think of ways to use these as part of a wall hanging or a garland. Before I move on, it's important to note that this project uses my breakaway crochet techniques. So if you haven't done so already, please have a look at the introductory videos that I've linked to in the description. You can also download the free pattern from Ravelry if you would like a hard copy to refer to. The link to that is in the description below. In this tutorial, I will start by showing you how to crochet the basic ornament. For this, I will be using a DK weight yarn and a size G hook. Later, I'll show you how to add the star shaped frame to your basic ornament. I'll start by crocheting the background circle and then later we'll put the snowflake on top which is crocheted together with the circle so that makes it possible to get by without any sewing. So to start the background circle and just to be consistent with my breakaway methods I'd like you to attach the yarn to the hook with a slip knot but leave kind of an extra long tail, which we'll need a bit later on. Okay, to start the background circle, the first stitch is a floating double crochet. As you remember, that's a yarn over. And then make the floating ring. Finish the double crochet by pulling through two loops twice. Next, we have a chain one and another double crochet in the floating ring. Chain one, and that's our pattern for this round one. Double crochet, chain one, so we end up with six double crochets and six chains. Ending with a slip stitch, of course, in the beginning of the round to close the circle. Ready for a round two, and this is where our long tail comes in. We use this to load the first stitch of the second round, which is a double crochet. And to do that, we wrap the yarn around from front to back two times which gives us two loops on the hook, and we'll use those to make our double crochet. Pull through two, pull through two. Work another double crochet in the same stitch, which is an increase. Work another increase in the next space. So in other words, you're working two double crochets in that next space, increase in the next stitch, increase in the next 
increase in the next space, and so on. That's your pattern for round two. Just do that all the way around. So there we have 24 double crochets in that round. And again, slip stitch in the first stitch to close that round. Round three starts again with a restore double crochet. So again, take that tail, wrap it around twice. Use that to make the first double crochet. And this round, the pattern's a little bit different. We start there with our restored double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the next stitch, increase in the next stitch, and then just one double crochet in the next stitch. So that's kind of our pattern there. I'll do that one more time. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the next stitch, increase in the next stitch, double crochet in the next stitch. So I'll just finish that off in that pattern. And again, close off the round with a slip stitch into the first stitch. And that is our background circle made. Let's fasten off the yarn. And the reason we've done these little spaces is that, is that helps us to know where to join our snowflake to this background circle. So those little spaces act as a guide. All right, so a little bit of terminology here. These spaces, there should be six from round one, our inner spaces and these six are outer spaces. Just so you know what I'm talking about later on when we get to that. Now let's start making the actual snowflake. I've loaded up my contrasting color yarn, in this case white, and I'm going to find any one of the outer spaces on the background circle and we're going to attach our new yarn to the background circle with a slip stitch through that space. And since this is the space we've started with, I'm going to refer that as the first outer space. That will be important later on. We continue with a floating slip stitch. Yarn around, pinch, Yarn around, pinch, yarn around, go through all three loops. And there's our floating ring there. Continue with a chain and three single crochets into the floating ring. So this is starting one of the tips of the snowflake. And since it's the first one, we're only going to work halfway. So this will make sense in a moment. Chain two, and now we're gonna head for the middle of our circle. And we need to locate the first inner space, which will be this one here. So you just find that by just kind of going straight down. And this one's sort of on the left here. That's the space we're interested in. And we're going to do a single crochet um, in that space. So to do that, just go through the center ring and come back up through that space. Go through a loop, complete the single crochet by drawing through two. 
So let's attach the snowflake at the center. Let's continue on now with the next tip, which we start with a chain two. Do a floating single crochet this time. So yarn around pinch, yarn around pinch, yarn around pull through two, yarn around pull through two. So there's our floating ring and the first single crochet made. We need two more single crochets in that ring. Chain one. And now we need to anchor this tip to the next base. So that was the first one we're gonna move along. And there's the next space. And to anchor this tip, we go through the center ring and the space and do a slip stitch through all three layers there. I'm calling that an anchor stitch in the pattern. So there now we've connected at least the first part of this tip to the background circle. Continue with four chains to make the very tip of the tip. <laughs> Do another anchor stitch, so go through the center ring and the same space, slip stitch that all together, chain one, three more single crochets in that center ring. Then we're going to slip stitch around that chain two there, close to our ring that we've just made. To close off that little tiny mini circle there. Chain two. And now we're heading back to one of our inner spaces. And we kind of just move along like that. So since we went into that space there, one here. We now go into that next one there. With another single crochet. Chain two and repeat what we've just done on that second tip there. And as you work along just just be careful that you're because once you get going, it's kind of hard to see where you've been. Just, you know, pry things apart and you can tell, oh, you've already gone into that space. So that's the next space there. So just make sure you're not going into the same space twice or skipping some over by mistake. So I'll just finish. Um, we should end up with um, six all together. So I'll, I'll um, finish the last one up here and join you at the end. So here we are, and as you have noticed, you know, the general pattern is to start from the outside, go in, go back out one of those, go in the middle, come back out, and so on and so forth. And now that we are um, back to the ready to do that first space. We've done a chain two there, but we've got to finish our first little tip. So that means after the chain two, we again do a slip stitch around the base of that half done tip there. Three more single crochets. Pull out the other side of it. Do the chain one. And again, we, we need to anchor the other side. So go through the ring and find that the space. Go through all, all those layers. Oops, slip stitch that together. I always take a couple of hits at that. And our last four chains and slip stitch into the beginning. And fasten off the thread.
And now as promised, I'd like to show you how to uh, make the uh, bamboo skewer frame. Um, for this, you will need um, some bamboo skewers. And I've these are about 10 inches long, or about 25 centimeters, I think. Probably better to get ones that are longer than you think you need than too short. <laughs> okay. So we're going to use those and it's just a, a very simple matter of turning your little ornament over and you know lucky for us we've got a pointy end that helps us to thread through the back so to start threading through find one of your outer spaces and just go to the right hand side of one of those double crochets and out through the other side there. So how easy is that? And we kind of want to center that and make your way around. Just going through, let's say we're going in and then back out. It can be a little bit frustrating because there you can get some snags if the bamboo is not perfectly smooth. That's not too bad. And just work your way around until you've got all six threaded through. So here's the, um, what it looks like from the back. Let's turn it over. And as you get the six through, sometimes you get um, places where you, you've got some big gaps where things don't want to lay perfectly flat. Don't worry too much about that unless it's just a really huge gap. In that case, just experiment with, you know, changing the order that they're in. But, um, I'm, and I'm sure there's a pattern for that, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> Maybe some of you can help me with that. But generally, it's not too big a deal to worry about. Okay, so the next stage here is is to kind of fasten these points together just to make sure the whole thing holds together. And the way I do that is I use these little clear elastic hair ties. And because they're clear, they don't really show. So that makes it, you know, pretty handy for us. So again, you're just going to Find one of your corners and wrap these around three or four times. And move it to the point. And, and that does a pretty good job of keeping everything secure. So just work your way around and don't, don't worry too much right now if Things aren't, you know, equally spaced and the points aren't perfect as we can always adjust that um, when we're through getting our little bands attached. So those are all my bands attached and as you can see I didn't worry too much as I went about how things were lined up. So now we can, we can go about fixing that up and sort of one uh, rule of thumb to make sure you've got everything um, in the right proportion, so to speak. Let me just shove that up there. Is you've got a di the distance between these two tips is kind of the same distance you will want for all these little triangles. Um, so that's that's how you can kind of gauge if you're um, getting the right proportion. Just keep going, fiddling around until you get it right. So there, that's not looking too bad. And our last little job is to trim the extra length off. I like to use some cutting pliers, but um, you might also have a sharp utility knife laying around 
Or you can even find an old <laughs> pair of scissors, dressmaking scissors, and cut them off. And again, you're just, just kind of eyeball it, whatever looks good to you. I like to go about like about that distance and snip it off and continue around until you've got them all trimmed and we're all done. Well, I should also say that if you if you can't find the these um, clear little rubber bands, um, you know, maybe you can only find ones in a different color. Like I've, I had some black ones here. Um, you know, you can maybe use those if you like, or if you have different color ones, they might even add to your ornament if you want, you know, sort of a different look. Or you can, um, if you can't find the bands at all, just use some spare yarn and tie it around. Um, some people might also want to use some hot glue. I haven't tried that, but um, that might work too if you want to glue things together. And the last thing I would highly advise doing is to give this just a little bit of a block, um, especially the tips. If you just, um, you just really need to pin the tips down and spritz them with a little bit of water and let it dry. Um, this one hasn't been blocked, um, but this one has. So you can, you can tell it does improve the appearance a bit. So that would be the last thing I would have you do. All right, so there we go. I hope you have a good Christmas and Please share with me any other creative ideas you might come up with for these little ornaments. I'd be I'm thrilled to see what you um, can do with these. Thank you for subscribing and watching, and I hope to see you again soon.